Being tax reform clearing a major hurdle in the Senate last night, but the overhaul pass is still very much unclear. Hours after House Republicans passed their tax bill, their colleagues on the Senate Finance Committee approved their version of tax overhaul, advancing it now to the Senate floor for consideration by the full chamber uh, for after the Thanksgiving recess. Now, uh, the Senate's uh, overall tax overhaul is slightly different than that of the House version. Sunsets uh, certain individual taxes occur after a few years, and there are other changes, too, that might make this a difficult process. Joining me now to discuss, Beverly Holberg, District Media Group President and The Hill contributor, Sarah Westwood, Washington Examiner, White House correspondent, Ashley Pratt, U.S. News and World Report contributor, and Mark Beckler, Tea Party Patriots co-founder and Citizens for Self-Governance President. Thank you all for joining. Let me go to you first, Sarah. Uh, I, I, you can sense a, a certain sigh of relief, if you will, from GOP, from Republicans on Capitol Hill, but there's also that anxiety that the Senate could still flub this. Absolutely. It's the same kind of problem that Republicans faced when health care was working its way through Congress, that health care passed with relative ease through the House, but then faced too many objections, too many hurdles when it got to the Senate, and the entire effort failed. The White House was faced with these questions during the briefing today, that what happens if the entire tax reform push just falls apart in the Senate, because there are already as many as six Republicans who are expressing doubts or trepidation about voting for the the bill as it currently is. There's differences between the two pieces of legislation in the House and the Senate. And it's entirely possible that once again, uh, a signature piece of President Trump's agenda will fail when it gets to the upper chamber. Now, the good news, I, I suppose, Beverly, is that uh, if, if they include the exclusion of the individual mandate and they buy themselves over $300 billion, that gives them some wiggle room. But there are certainly different sort of put different forms of pushback in the Senate. There's some folks who think that small businesses aren't getting a big enough break. There are others who are worried about the deficit. And then there are others who just who just seem not to be on board with the Trump agenda, to be quite frank. Well, I love that the individual mandate is part of this, because let's not forget that it was the Chief Justice John Roberts who said um, with the Supreme Court decision that the individual mandate was a tax. So it makes sense why it's being put in tax reform. Even Rand Paul, even with his banged up ribs, is coming to D.C. to push this forward. But I would agree that that does make things a little trickier when you take a look at what Sarah just said, which they weren't able to get health care passed through the Senate. But even though there are some who seem to be on the fence on this, I I think some can be convinced. I think Senator McCain, you will see him push forward and maybe vote for this. So I'm hopeful that that something can happen because Republicans, they know one thing, they need a legislative victory. They do. And, and here's the thing, Ashley, uh, according to the Joint uh, 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 Tax Commission, uh, the JCT rather, 2027, your average tax rate for uh, the categories that start at 20,000 and end up 75,000 actually all go higher than they currently are. Uh, they, uh, you, know, you couple that with some of the other problems that people have, like small businesses not getting uh, rates as low as big corporations, and it's still, it's, it's still murky. Right, and I, I do think you, you bring up a great point here, Charles, which is that there are some savings here that uh, can be found. I do think that moving forward, you do have some senators that are on the fence, and there's no doubt about that. You've seen the questions around health care. When it comes down to it, the main question seems to be from Senator Murkowski, which is, you know, if we don't have a health care structure in place here, are, if the premiums are going to be higher, what is the benefit if we're lowering taxes, you know, because it's kind of a wash in the end. So that brings up your second point, which is, you know, this is where things are still a little murky. So because health care didn't go through and now we're trying to do tax reform, there's a lot of murkiness when it comes down to it. So I think we will see some senators fall in line and get on board because, I mean, essentially, this isn't the Trump agenda here. This is a Republican agenda that we're looking to, to accomplish. So when Republicans are really trying to push something forward and go back to their home states over the break right. that's coming up, they're going to need something to show for themselves. So I do think there needs to be some give and take here right. on tax Although, reform. Mark, a few of these potential no's, uh, this is their last rodeo, right? So they don't, they're don't they not worried uh, about, uh, about being reelected. And some of them, even if they were, maybe they would still push back on their own per personal principles. As a Tea Party person, how do you see the bill as it's starting to come together with respect to the middle class and Main Street America? Does it deliver? Well, you know, it's hard to say that the most important words I heard previous to mine were unclear, murky, 
and then Republican. The first thing I want to know is what's Republican about this? Since when is not cutting spending Republican, right? This, this spends more than we've ever spent before. We've got tax decreases followed by tax increases like I voted before it before I voted against it. Th there's just a mishmash and honestly the grassroots are just confused. There's nothing clear coming out of Congress right now. But you do agree the lower taxes in general will help the general public market. Yeah, we'd love to see lower taxes. What people are really horrified by is the idea that they're lower and then they become higher. I mean, this is a recipe for future disaster, a future war. What we want to see is just, look, real tax reform. Let's get it done and make it permanent. This idea that it's somehow going to retroactively go higher in the future, that's just craziness, and the grassroots don't understand it. Sarah, in the past, though, there have been temporary tax cuts that ultimately became, uh, became permanent. And uh, in fact, uh, President Obama allowing some of the Bush tax cuts to become permanent. So I think they're going to sell this to Main Street to say this is the only way we could get it through at this particular moment. Have faith, we'll deliver down the line, and these tax cuts that you're receiving now will be permanent. Is that going to be good enough? Well, Kevin Hassett, the White well, House's you, chief economist, said today that it's suboptimal to have the individual side of the tax cuts be uh, temporary. But at the end of the day, if these tax cuts are going to produce the kind of growth that the White House says, then it would be just the natural next step that Congress would make them permanent because they would you know, see the kind of wage growth, the kind of employment expansion that the White House is promising with these tax cuts, and it would be the natural next step. So the White House has to be banking that their assessments of what these tax cuts will do are accurate, and then it would be just the simple, uh, it would be logical that right. the tax cuts would pass, but Republicans won't always have the majority, and that's the fear, right, right. is that if they're temporary, Democrats can undo them down the line. Sure, and here's the thing, Ashley, and I like that word, suboptimal. Uh, I got a feeling it will come up again in the 2018 elections. I'm not sure what side we use it, but uh, suboptimal, is that going to be enough? Again, I think, uh, listen, I'm, I, I'm like everyone else. I think I, I'm not sure why or how the Republicans have gotten into this particular predicament. I do, I hate to say it, but I blame the establishment for not playing ball with the, oh. with the, with the chief executive. I, I really do. I just, listen, the American public voted for an agenda in November. And, and, and it's shocking to me that it's, being, it's this difficult to get it through, Ashley. Well, now what you just mentioned, Charles, is the American public voted for this. And what we just heard from Mark was that the grassroots are pretty confused and unhappy with what's coming out of this. So now is Trump part of the establishment? Because it seems as though the very establishment we're talking about are the ones that are holding this back. So it seems as though here there we have Trump coming out of the White House saying that the Democrats aren't playing ball when it comes to tax reform. And now we've got Republicans who aren't playing ball when it comes to tax reform. So who really is at fault here? Is it the president? for not being able to corral his own party and come up with something that the grassroots would be happy with and not confused by? I don't really know because it seems as though there is a lot of confusion around a lot of this. Right. Why is it when Republicans have control of the White House and Congress that nothing can get done legislatively? Right. That well, seems to be the biggest issue. To be clear, the establishment is on both sides of the aisle and when you have a razor thin majority, all it takes is a couple of people, two or three, to give you the thumbs down. Guys, thank you all very much.